Right, let's get into the podcast and let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Breaking Bike Podcast UK. Today we are here with Ray Richards. Ray is CEO and founder of Do Something Different, which we're going to get into, what that involves, how why you set it up, etc. And co-host of, or host, co-host slash host of the Life Done Differently podcast, which we'll also talk about Um I'm not sure. Oh, no, you are still doing that. I've just had a look, actually. Yeah, you, you uploaded, like, April. So that would be cool to talk about as well. And, yeah, Ray, how are you doing in the sunny Brighton? I'm all right, yeah. Yeah, as just discussed, the sun helps. The sun definitely helps, yeah, yeah, yeah. That vitamin D, that general general mood lift that it gives everyone. So, Ray, let's talk about how you why you got into why you set up do something different and what you did before that and where the desire to engage with something like that began yeah um that's a good question <laughs> um good start so why what was the first, what's the what's the first question uh, why did you start do something different where, where why did I start to do something I different? Yeah. Um, I had sold a company um, and I had been uh, doing the usual thing of um, using the money to um, buy a house and do it up and it was coming towards the end of that and I got a phone call from somebody I knew um, saying, would you like to get involved in a diversity project uh, at uh, PwC, actually? And um, so I did. Uh, and I, for some bizarre reason, uh, won the gig um, to help them with this, this, this project. And I woke up one morning and thought, what the hell am I doing? Um, uh, I don't really, you know, I'm not really interested in putting another piece of e-learning out there, which uh, people flick through while they're PwC. watching extenders or sorry, oh, Price Waterhouse Coopers, big one of okay. the big, uh, the big boys in the world of corporate consulting and county okay. and auditing and all of that stuff. Um, and yeah, and I just thought, ah, oh, you know, I just don't want to do something that doesn't actually change people's behaviour. Mm. Um, just ticks the boxes. You know, how how do I actually help people change behaviour? I, I don't really know how to do that. <laughs> um, so I phoned a friend um, who reintroduced me to a couple of professors of psychology, uh, Ben and Karen. Um, that's Ben Fletcher and Karen Pine, and we got together, started to discuss the project, and you know, it seemed quite quickly that um, they had a really good understanding of how to help people change behaviour, uh, and that was the Do Something Different methodology. Um, and as a result, we put together a, a programme which, um, you know, went down very well, Um but more than anything, it got me really into um, the whole field of behaviour change, um, which I, I really had never uh, touched upon um, in my years in business. Uh, or I probably had, but unwittingly. Um, so yeah, that's that, that's how it all started. Um, I was, you know, I was really blown away by. The idea of behavioral flexibility, maybe we'll come on to that, um, yeah. which is at the core of do something different methodology. Um, and just thought, well, the, you know, the world needs to know about this. And so we formed a company called Do Something Different and uh, took it from there. What What was the company that you sold? Was it to do with like well-being and self-development or was it completely? No, not at all. Nothing, no. nothing not related at all. At um, all. Uh, I would argue it was to do with um, a lack of well-being. <laughs> it was it, digital marketing. Uh, oh, you know, it was we were so we, essentially 
we grew from a being a search engine optimization agency um at a time when people most people hadn't heard of it um, yeah and sort of expanded ourselves oh, wow. into well you know i think we were one of the first companies to employ a social media director no. um um back in 2000 that was probably around about 2006 um, oh, yeah. so uh Facebook yeah and the um, years at that point so social media was really well it's pre google you know it was all pre it was all pre google it's uh, it's incredible you know thinking back it is um, we were you know we really were at the forefront of something yeah definitely. um we were innovating and i think that's what i get the buzz from is is sort of doing new stuff absolutely yeah and so then you you sold the company. When did you when did you sell or have you frozen or were you just very still? Two, know, February two thousand and seven. Uh, but you know, we were uh, you know, we had we had to hang around for a bit and do a thing called an earn out where you sort of stay and uh hand over the reins of the company to the new owners. So that was three years. Um so yeah, it wasn't until two thousand and ten um that I actually started to do something different. And you've been, and so what what does it involve? You know, for the audience, what is it actually? What are you promoting? The pro promoting the i the idea that, um, and I suppose the Einstein quote is 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 a good way of explaining it. Now, insanity is you know the definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again and expecting different results. So, yeah. in its simplest form, it's just sort of saying if you know if you want to get different results from your life, then you have to do something different. Um, you know, if you keep on doing what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always got. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just promoting the idea that the best way to change is to change. <laughs> I mean, it sounds so ridiculous, but but it is true. You know, yeah. we, we we very often live our life or, or certain parts of our life on autopilot mm -hmm. and we're not satisfied with it. Um, but we just keep doing what we've always done because it's you know that's the way we're wired. We're wired for habit, um, and and changing things um, is really you know it takes a lot of energy. Um, you know when you're in different situations and novelty and curiosity is you know it takes a lot of lot of energy. And uh, you know the way we've developed. You know, we, we haven't quite caught up. We're still, we're still our ancient bodies, and and we don't want to waste calories. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we just we 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 live a life on autopilot, um, and really we're, you know, when we're not, you know, particularly conscious, we're we're sort of, yeah, we we our reptile brains are in charge, um, and we're just interested in survival and reproducing it's you know basic animal <laughs> instinct um exactly, yeah. so yeah um i was that, that that's that's what it's all about yeah no i was watching so at first actually i watched i found the flex so i've downloaded the flex app which i um i haven't opened it up yet because i was doing other research where i was downloading and i forgot i downloaded it but I looked, I watched your video where you, with you, with you narrating and first thing first, brilliant video. I don't know who you got to do the little animations and stuff, but that was awesome. And on Davison, he's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, that was brilliant. I loved it. It really kept me, kept me captivated. And I loved the bit at the end where you were talking about the, the one of the things I wrote down was when you said, which is spoken about quite a bit, but I'd never sort of articulated. You said it's easier. It is easier to change your actions than it is to change your thoughts. And I thought that was really, really good because not a lot of people say that. But actually, because there's we talk about the step from thoughts create feelings, emotions, actions, behaviors, and then habits. I've got a thing in my room that says your habits create your destiny, and it starts from thoughts and works its way down the chain, but we often think that that's the process we have to go down if we want to change a habit, but actually we can, you can flip it. And if your thoughts are upsetting you do something differently and then that will change habits, feelings and, and go backwards. So I love that little video that you made. How did you come across that idea? Um, I mean, that really came from Ben and Karen. Okay. Um, 
you know, and it came from it came from their research or, or Ben's original research. And you know, Karen's just a brilliant translator. Um, you know, she's a prof- professor of psychology herself, but you know, she's good at the translation bit and making it something that that people understand. Okay, yeah. Um, so, do you, do you want to know a bit about Ben's Ben's research? Because I, I think it is quite yeah, definitely. You know, it's really important stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, this goes back a long way. It probably goes back to the seventies, eighties when Ben was first um, interested in well, stress in the workplace is where it all started. And he wanted to sort of understand why it was that some people were really stressed and others weren't. And what he did was, um, well, he set about trying to understand why some people were stressed and some people weren't. And the way to do that was to find a job that people were doing that was very similar. They were very similar to each other. You know, so you and I are both doing the same job. Why is it that you're really chilled and I'm really stressed? And the job he found that he felt was as similar as anything was a, a checkout start at a Tesco's in North London. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, you're working out on checkout bit one, and I'm working out on checkout two. And you know, give or take, our experience, you know, what we're doing is the same. Yeah. So, uh, and what he found was, to he's cutting a long story short. But what he found was that that you, as the person who weren't stressed, you had lots of behaviours in your behavioural repertoire. You could choose to be um, in a given situation. You could choose to take risks or play it safe. You could be spontaneous or you could plan ahead. You could behave as an extrovert or an introvert. You could trust people or you or you could be wary of others. Um, and so on and so on, um, and yeah, that that that's how it all started. He 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 sort of called it behavioural flexibility. Um, those people who had lots of behaviours and they could operate, um, you know, this way or that way, depending okay. on the circumstances, um, um, you know, they 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 were less stressed than those that could only trust people. Or could o- were only wary of others, um, so it's about balance, which is why I reference that yin and yang <laughs> in the background there, um, because it, you know I, I think this whole idea of balance is super super important. And, um, so, so what he what he did was he started to help organisations recruit people who had high levels of behavioural flexibility because they were more likely to be successful in life, you know in their career but in life as well because they had this ability to uh, yeah. behave in one way or another um and then one of his researchers at the university of hertfordshire sort of came to him one day she was researching people's ability to complete their own personal projects so that could have been learning another language better relationship with their partner learning to swim getting a new job whatever it might be all these different goals that they had and she um, noticed a correlation between BMI, body mass index, and behavioral flexibility. Those people who had higher BMIs had lower levels of behavioral flexibility. And she's sort of asking the question, is this interesting? Um, and Ben was looking at it thinking, uh, wow, this is really interesting. Because in theory, this means that if we can find a way of um, increasing people's behavioural flexibility, we should, in theory, be able to reduce their BMI. Mm. And again, to cut a very long story short, you know, this is years ago going by <laughs> as this is happening. Um, you know, they put in place the first rudimentary do something different program, which helped people to sort of expand the underdeveloped parts of their personality. Um, and lo and behold, not only did they start to um, you know, their BMI reduced, but they started to complete their personal projects in a way that the control group weren't. Mm. So do something different was just a, it's a way to take small steps out of your comfort zone to develop the parts of your personality that you don't already have. Um, Brilliant. Uh, and that ha- that's a massive, massive help for our well-being. Completely, completely. 
have you heard of i believe it's epigenetics it's the idea that when we're put into new uh, environments new genes like code and turn on and how basically there's loads of genes and potential that lies dormant inside all of us and how it's only through novelty and new sensations and experiences can we therefore begin to actualize who we who we truly could be and i think that's absolutely absolutely true i would really recommend i do i used to work in schools and i used to um in a, with a small class as a teaching assistant and i would kind of build like a little character profile of all the students and i would do my best to uh encourage them and place them in positions or but encourage them to act in a certain way that was just on the edge of slightly out of their comfort zone but doable enough so they could do it because i was hoping that they could increase their own personal repertoire of behavior because i've always thought that it would be of benefit of benefit so that's really interesting that that ben guy um sorry ben but um said that that is that that's what he found and i think that's completely right stretch yourself out conceptually you'll be let you'll be more resistant to stress and therefore you'll be more likely to well i don't know how the the bmi thing quite works i haven't thought you know and you just heard it but yeah that make that sounds really cool yeah i mean i think it's all the same stuff and i think it chimed with my experience of my life um you know that that um you know, it's you know, I don't know what's what's an example. I mean, probably public speaking would be the biggest example. Yeah, you know, that was something I was utterly petrified of. I mean, like like a lot of people. Um, yeah. I, I mean, utterly, utterly. You know, I was the kid in class that just didn't want to read out aloud. Um, I, I you know, it was just excruciating the idea that I'd be speaking in front of people and just i sort of i think i got uh, you know my first just yeah it's probably my first job where i sort of started to see other people my colleagues speaking in public and i sort of realized that they were see seem, seemed to be doing well in their career um um they were the they were the bosses <laughs> um and i thought oh god i'm gonna have to do that if i want to yeah. like, you know, develop and, and, and I did it and I did it lots and lots and lots of times and every single time. And even now when I do it, I, you know, mostly I'm, you know, I'm shitting bricks, but over the years, it's just gradually, gradually become, <laughs> it's not become comfortable, but it's become less uncomfortable than that terrible. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. And, you know, and good things come from it. You know, good things come from it. You meet interesting people, you, um, you get to go to interesting places and, you know, it's, it's worth it. Um, so yes. yeah, it, 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 the whole philosophy where well, the whole, the whole science of behavioral flexibility chimed with, I think probably my philosophy, my, my experience of life. Uh, and that's, that's why I sort of threw myself into it. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I personally can't claim any credit for the, the do something different methodology. Um, I'm just a supporter. The yeah, in the in the in the video, there was the the animation, a little segment where, well, I'm not sure how it was, but it was the idea of the more you do something, the more accustomed you get you get to it, and the the less of uh i think it was like something dropping and then like something getting uh, wider but anyway that doesn't matter that that was a really good um point and, and i can completely... i think i know the bit you're talking about yeah, yeah. it's really took you know that's that's i mean i talk about um the known and the unknown and, and yeah. you know and do something doing something different is the unknown is going into the unknown and the more you do it the more you do it the more you do it eventually it becomes the known it becomes yeah. normal exactly yeah um you know and i think we probably the understanding of all this 
um, language was probably accelerated by COVID. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, the new normal, that, that phrase started to be used quite a bit. Yeah. You know, working from home is a new normal. Doing, you know, I started to do podcasts via video link <laughs> uh, only in COVID, um, which I still don't think is as good as in real life, but it does mean you get to do, to meet people from all over the world. Absolutely, at, yeah. At a time that suits them. So, you know, that you lose on one side, but you gain on another. So, um, yeah. So, I can't remember where we were, but yeah. That's the right. unknown and the unknown. That, and that balance between the two um, is all for me is what it that's as far that's as deep as i can get it that 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 and that it's is not much yeah sorry carry on no no i was just gonna say that it's as deep as i can go with it you know that you know it's just, that's as simplified as i can make it for myself and and anybody that's prepared to listen that i that, think that it is finding a balance between the known and the unknown yeah I think that's almost as deep as it does go, to be fair, the known and the unknown. There's, you know, as the yin and yang, the Taoist symbol, that's what that's supposed to to um, signify. Everywhere everywhere we look, in, in, in almost all aspects of life, there are these nominally sort of binary terms. And then there's this intersection point where... I think where the, the magic's supposed to happen and th there's a great book which you should read called the mark i haven't read it so you know what hypocrite, <laughs> but it, it's i've watched a podcast about it so it's nearly there you're gonna say the master is servant yeah i was gonna say that yeah the, the master is emissary Ian um, gilchrist yeah Ian gilchrist yeah yeah, yeah. He, he he he's my he's my new uh poster boy he's yeah he's, He's my go go to uh, YouTube <laughs> good, good. and podcast. Uh, he's written thing. a few actually, so or maybe not a few, but he, I think he's written another one. Um, he's anyway. written, uh, his latest one is two book two books. He was going to do a short one, I ended up writing two books. So, okay. um, but yeah, he, he I mean he talks about you know f for his left brain and right brain. Mm, exactly, so that's that's what he's he's so so interested in. But it really does map onto what we're talking about it does yeah that and, and and jordan peterson who um i'm not sure if you know who i i talk about a lot on, yeah i know on yeah he was a previous poster boy of mine so yeah cool yeah he was a previous poster boy he was the one that um i discovered ian mcgill christ through and the you know the the landscapes of chaos and order and how if we're too if we're in too much order we become bored and life becomes meaningless and dull and then if we're in too much chaos, then we're in a constant state of anxiety and fight or flight or yeah. can't get anything done because we're just in mayhem. And it's about finding that 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 balance. And, you know, I, I was... Yeah, sorry, you got something to say? No, no, no. Okay, no, good. Listening. I'm listening. There's a stupid delay on this thing. I can't... I don't know how to sort it out. I might have to move to someone else because it is really annoying. But um, Riverside, sort it out. And yes, because I <laughs> literally, yeah, I was thinking the other day, I was thinking about how football, I, I, I'm a big football fan and football is, a, is, well, sport in general is a good example of chaos and order in the sense of the order is the rules are the rules and, you know, Bass and dodgy VAR refereeing, the rules stay the same, but the gameplay and the teams and the players and what happens in a game is the chaos. And that's why we can watch football and love it because it's it exists in that perfectly middle realm of the sort of the rectification of chaos and order because we you know oh it's offside people you know fans can shout offside penalty they have some understanding of what's going on but no game is is exactly the same so and there's so many examples of how that that middle point is such a powerful like a few years ago it's died down now, but a few years ago, all these people were banging around flow, around flow state, how you can achieve flow state, and they were trying to sell you things like this is how you can get into flow state. That's basically what 
flow state is that point of you know intersection and uh midpoint so it, it is really really good you're practice. in control you're not in control you're in yeah, control exactly. you're not in control yeah, yeah. life yeah i mean I, I i've got a slight issue with jordan peterson's language nothing else is not not what he's talking about but just the language because i i think when he talks about order and chaos and i i, I think to a lot of people order sounds good and chaos sounds bad that is a good point and yeah that it's not that's not the way it is Very so true. i talk about the known and the unknown that's a better at, way at one end of at one end of the known at, at the extreme end of the known is a rut and i think that's where you you know you're saying you, you sort of lose the will you don't you know will to live sort of yeah. thing get you know will to get out of bed um in the morning and then at the extreme end of the unknown is chaos mm. you know and, and, and in in our podcast we you know we've we've interviewed you know one i can think of in particular who who you know he really threw himself into the unknown he he lost contact with his family and his friends you know at a time when mobile phones weren't a thing um so, you know, it's it much easier to do. It's much easier to throw yourself into the unknown. Um, you know, and he ended up on a, a a cliff in his car in Mexico with a bottle of tequila. And, you know, he was literally on the edge. He was literally on on, on the edge and, and, and he came back from it. Um, but, yeah, he, he'd thrown himself into the unknown and taken it too far, yeah. as is his way, because, that you know, he has a personality that is... It's it's just like that but other people have got, have got the other extreme where you know they've taken the they just want to keep everything in the know and they want to be in control of absolutely everything but we can't be yeah. i mean i think yeah. that's the that's why i'm so passionate about this because we, we can't be in control of everything um you know it, life is always throwing us curveballs um you know we have you know people die um, you know, you know, organisations make people redundant. Relationships break up. Yeah. Um, you know, accidents happen. You know that, and I think it's it's really important that, and particularly children, particularly the kids you were. So, why what you were doing in school, uh, I think is super important because that's a brilliant time. The earlier, the better that you Absolutely. can get people used to. Um, you know those those small steps into the unknown, those small steps out beyond your comfort zone, which do the job of stretching it. Um, yeah, you put that in your yeah. Uh, it, it, it's it's really really important stuff. It really is. Um, but you know we do have this reptile brain, which you saw in the video. I, mean, you know, I, I call my reptile brain Ronnie, right. and yeah, and, and you know Ronnie is a little fucker. He really is. You know he he. He he just um you know, he's absolutely petrified of any change whatsoever. It, you know, he, he, if it, if it's if it's not he's just interested in you know, in, in surviving. Um yeah. and, and reproducing. Um so, you know, anything new he wants to avoid. Yeah. Completely. And you know, and he's really, really super useful when you're crossing the road. Mm. Exactly. Um, yeah. That's conservative, isn't but it? Not all the time. But not all the time. Yeah. Have you read the book, uh, The Chim Paradox? Uh, I haven't read it, but I, I, yeah, I've heard of it. And yeah, uh, yeah, people reference it quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's good. That's related to what you were just talking about. The, uh, yeah, how the the guy that wrote it, he, he speaks about oh, what's the computer, which is kind of like the unconscious, and then the human, and then the chimp, and the chimp is the bit you were talking about, it's the, you know, the emotion and, and the limbic system, and then how they get... Uh, I, I always imagine in Toy Story 3, there's a monkey that watches the toys on the camera, and if he sees something, he starts. he's got like symbols on his hands, and he starts whacking them together, and some people have very, very... Uh, sensitive and uh, responsive 
monkey symbol things and other people don't and i always recommend people to read the chimp paradox when they're just when they say when they say something like oh but part of me knows this but then there's this other part of me that doesn't and i'm really confused mm -hmm. then i say yeah well you know that's that's what's going on there read the chimp paradox or go on the flex app yeah 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 or, or, or just you know or just just do what you can to i mean I, I just did a workshop recently um uh i had a company um come to me and you know i got them to name you know i call mine ronnie what's yours called you know um and it, i think it's just a useful thing to do to give your that reptile part of your brain a name um yeah so yeah uh it, it, you know and I think, why is it useful? I think it's useful because it sort of separates the two. Um, you know, I, I've got Ray and Ronnie. You'll have Ollie and, I don't know, Colin. Colin. Um, I, <laughs> I, I say Colin because I know one of the, uh, one of the, my, uh, one of the guests. So the workshop called There's Colin. Sorry, his name is Colin's out there. <laughs> yeah, it's Ollie. It doesn't uh, sound very sort But of, it's uh, useful because you, it's useful because you can, you know, you can just, you know, I sort of every so often I'm just like, no, fuck off, Ronnie, go away, you know, you know, this isn't get out of this. This is nothing to do with you. I'm not going to lose my life yeah, exactly. by by speaking in public. I'm not going right. to lose, you know, lose my life by trying a new vegetable, <laughs> by speaking to a stranger. It, you know, it's just not going to happen. Um, so you know, you're not. You're, you're not needed. Thanks very much, but you're not needed. Yeah. And, and one of the most encouraging pieces of sort of not advice, but theories that I have that I could, that I could give someone is that I think you spoke about this as well in the video is that when we take a step out into the unknown, it isn't just that we grow as a person in that specific context that we were afraid of something. The, the stretch and the, the the growth, I believe, seeps out into all aspects of you. So all aspects of your being and, and you grow not just in that uh, localized way, but also you... So the, they know the sort of kind of Jordan Peterson thing, not completely. They, they believe now that when people go to therapy and they overcome a fear, isn't that they get less afraid of what they were once afraid of is that they become braver and that they become more comfortable yeah. yeah they become become more comfortable with uncomfortable yeah exactly they, they they increase their zone of comfort they so what was once sat outside is now within it isn't that they're no longer afraid of that thing necessarily but it's that it's within their zone of attainment and achievement or you know uh yeah which i i think that's that's such an encouraging piece of um i sort of ideology because it basically means that if you're afraid of something go out and conquer it and it doesn't just mean that it doesn't just you be, you'll become a less a more confident and more capable and able person in all aspects of your life not just in that one realm and I suppose vice versa is when you when you let a fear win. This is what happens when people become agoraphobic. I've not, I haven't been agoraphobic, but when I've been quite anxious in my life, I've had these thoughts sort of go off in my mind, and I've had to watch them and think, well, that's quite dangerous. You think don't want to go out because something bad will happen, and then your brain says, or you go somewhere, something bad happens, and then you think, well, I'm not going to go there anymore. But then you go somewhere else and something bad also happens you think well i'm not going to go there anymore and then before you know it your brain is like well every time we a lot of the times we go out something bad happens so maybe we just shouldn't go out anymore and that's how you become an acrophobic is that the ripple effect works back it works against you rather than for you so which can be quite dangerous and obviously damaging uh which is what happens with yeah. people ocd really badly well I, I think i think that you know that there i do think there is well i think there's a 
there's a sort of shortcut to remembering the best the, the best ways to expand your comfort zone i think mm-hmm. it's the three three what i call the three p's it's you know I'm, i can't remember whether i mentioned it in the video or not um but it, it you know new people yeah. you know uh, are really helpful you know really helpful uh, uh, uh sort of expanding your behavioral flexibility um new places are really yeah. helpful and you know the truth of it is that if you go to new places there's a very good chance you're going to meet new people uh, just think about when you go on you know if you go on holiday um you know you, you you've got new foods you've got new different type of weather you've got you know you know yeah. and you're sort of forced out of your comfort zone and uh, really? unfortunately all too all too often i just remember a story about a guy who was he, him and his girlfriend they were they went to the same caravan park in north wales every year mm. um and uh then one year um you know a couple of friends of theirs um persuaded them to go abroad uh, and go to greece yeah. And I, and I can't remember where it was they went, but they went to a resort in, in Greece and they absolutely loved it. Um, you know, so they'd been going all these years to this caravan park and they'd gone to Greece the first time. They absolutely loved it. So they went to Greece every year for the rest of their lives. Yeah. You know, and, and not understanding that, you know, there was they didn't just get lucky. This resort in Greece was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. How lucky, you know, it's yeah, just, yeah, there are so many places out there that are, you know, just the the novelty um, is wonderful. I mean, I just just I went to India in February, and I'd never been to India before. And my God, you know, it's total assault on the senses. It really is. Um, but but exhilarating. You know, you sort of you know you feel as though you're living life on the edge as you're hurtling through Mumbai in a uh, in a taxi the size of a yeah. smart car. Yeah, exactly. Because oh, people, uh, but yeah, it, it, but people. Sorry, Karen. Karen. Yeah, sorry. Just to just to finish that, people, new people, new places, and new parts of your personality. That was it. Okay. That, that is, uh, that's. New yeah. So those, those are the sort of three P's, the sort of shortcut way of remembering what it takes to step into the unknown. Yes, uh, uh, and we we often we often seek out that feeling of exhilaration and adrenaline which is why we love people love to do you know roller coasters and and they love they 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 read fiction and we're all looking for well to some varying degrees depending on who you are as you mentioned earlier that guy that you know who is is very extreme we're all looking for some realm of uh that they talk about I was thinking about this the other, not the other day but for a while they, they use, people use the term escapism but I think escapism is the wrong terminology I think it's taking yourself out of yourself I don't know what elevation isn't not really a thing isn't a thing but I don't know there's there's it's not maybe not quite the right terminology it is now it is now, it is now. okay okay cool Ele- elevationism yeah I started using that um, and what else was I going to say you were going to say oh yeah I think Another thing is on the flip side of everything we're talking about, there are some people that you meet and their life is, I guess this is when the chaos terminology is correct. Their life is complete chaos. And you look at them and go, you need to take your, you need to source, you need to, you know, do things that are easy. So clean your room, as John Peters would say, but you know, you get in their car and it's like, to use a a cliche term, a bomb went off in there. And they and they they're also incredibly erratic and scatty brained. Those are the people that actually really would benefit from being more orderly in their life. And yeah, that's it's a, yeah. Back to what we're talking about. It's a balance. It's a balance. Yeah. And yeah. if your life is chaos, you know, and and you know, the school my wife works at, you know, it, it's full of kids whose home lives are chaos. Mm. You know, the, 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 they have a huge amount of chaos, and what the school brings them is some is 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 stability. Exactly, it brings them the known. It brings them reliability. They can rely on the people uh, there. Um, but yeah, it's 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 
yeah, it's different for different people. Um, it is different, that, you know, what, what they need to stretch, you know, and, and as you say, um, you know, if your life is chaos, you, you absolutely need to bring order to it. You need to yeah. bring some stability to it. Um, you need to have some good solid routines with good solid people around you. Um, and, and do what you can to, to, you know, develop that side. Yeah. To the create a solid foundational structure beneath you. So therefore, because chaos is inevitable in life, isn't it? Like human beings are fundamental. Your relationship, relationships go up and down. Jobs go up and down. You know, you, you, it's like, you use another football terminology, one week you beat Man United 3-1 and then the next thing you know, you're losing to Sheffield United 2-0. And it's just, and then, the highs and lows of life are part and parcel, so chaos is inevitable, which is hence, which is why building some form of structure underneath you is incredibly valuable, but it's not the be all and end all because, as we've already said, it can get too much and become. Yeah, and I and I think from from a very personal point of view, I mean, I, I what I, you know, I've I've had highs and I've had lows, and I think. It's probably because I'm getting older. Um, maybe it's to do with experience. Probably both. Um, but I'm sort of I'm less interested in having those super highs, um, right. and I'm less interested in having those super lows. But I don't want it to be flat. No, you know I do not want my life to be just dull. Um, yeah. And 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 actually, you know, over the last few years, yeah, I've probably been working on developing order in my in my my life rather than um you know going into the unknown but um yeah I, I think you, you can have too much of it and I think you know when I did this workshop I actually sort of did a little questionnaire for everybody that attended and I did it myself and I suddenly realized that you know I'm not particularly spontaneous you know that, that's where I'm in terms of balance. Yeah, I'm not spontaneous, so um, that's what I'm working on being a bit more, more spontaneous. So, um, yeah, and it changes, you know, as you go through life. You know, you, if you've just become a parent, you've got enough chaos in your life, you've got enough exactly. of the unknown in your yeah. life. Completely. Yeah. <sighs> but, but that is another way of adding, actually, let's. No, okay. I will say the final point. We're going to move on after this because there's more to talk about. But that 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 is, I can imagine maybe as you get to the the age that you have parents, that's when your life starts to slightly, you know, stagnate a little bit, and and you hit a sort of plateau before maybe you get older, and then more events occur and stuff. But having kids is a way of breeding new, literally breeding new life into your own life. And therefore, it adds interest and uh, oscillation, I guess, of, of good and bad, which people isn't isn't necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. As you said, it's it's the part of life; it's meant to be experienced. Maybe. Yeah, I think I think with with kids, it's, it's interesting because I I do see, you know, I think we've probably all seen this. Um, in in general, and I'm not talking about individual people, I'm saying, but as humans and as parents across the board, I think we have, we want to control um, yeah. our children's exposure to the unknown. Um, we are yeah. less, yeah, that's right. We are less willing for our kids to be in. Um, risky situations um than we once were and and i think that's a problem you know i i think yes you know yes. I and mean, i always said to my kids oh, yeah. i always said to my kids you know talk to weirdos the wow well, um, you know to, you know talk talk to strangers because you know the more you talk to people that are strangers you know that they, <clears throat> they don't like you're a stranger to me yeah you know um 
you know, we've we've not met before. We had a brief conversation, five minute conversation. Um, <clears throat> strangers are great. You know, they really are. You've got to be really unlucky to to find a stranger. You know, bump into a stranger who's gonna do you harm. You've, yeah. You know, if you're a little kid lost on the street, I mean, you've probably found kids. I've found kids, you know, lost on the street, you know, and yeah, you know, you're just going to try and find their parent for them. You know, you're not going to do anything else. You've got to be really super unlucky. Um, but you also have people who do put themselves in dangerous situations. Um you know, keep doing it. They keep doing it. They keep doing yeah. it. And if you keep doing it, then you're going to end up, yeah, with problems. Possibly. Or as you said, this yeah. insanity is not adapting. Les, you've you've sort of brushed on it briefly. Um, maybe there isn't anything to say, or you're not really. You don't want to talk about it. But can we talk a bit about you and maybe your mental health? Because you know, everyone that I met that has gone down this journey has always got. 90 percent 95 percent of the time has got a slight little story to tell as to why <laughs> obviously you're a creative person so i understand why you're interested and you, you're interested in this but is there anything more to uh what drew you to this line of work i guess um i mean i i think i mean i'm i'm a i'm a human being um you're a human True. being. Um, I think, give it, give or give or take. I think we all experience, mm. you know, this whole mental health thing. I think, have I experienced highs and lows? Absolutely, my God. I mean, I, I, mean, I have done today. <laughs> you know, I, I have done this. I, I did yesterday. I, I did this week. This I point. did last month. <laughs> Um, it, it, it's, you know, I think, I think until I got involved in this whole world of psychology, behavior change, philosophy, you know, whatever you want to call it, um, I think I was just unaware of, uh, uh, of what I was going through, mm -hmm. um, I think I must have been drawn to it because I wanted to understand why I felt so different at different times. Um, you know, I certainly know that, um, you know, I know there were, I know, I know there are, you know, people who would have looked at me and the others that sold our company and thought, wow, God, you know, they, like, God, the life must be great for them now. Wow, oh, they've sold their business and they've made some money. And God, you know, they're sorted for the rest of their life. They're, you know, going to be happy. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. <laughs> you know, it really, really doesn't work like that. It really doesn't. Um, so uh, my personal journey is that, you know, I think the same as absolutely everybody else's, whether they know it or not, that there are, uh, there are highs and lows, and I think I just want to try and. I mean, I certainly got reached the point in my life where I know that when I'm not feeling great, um, and I'm thinking, "What the fuck is this all about?" I know that it won't last. I know that feeling won't last. Um, and I know when I'm feeling good um, and I'm enjoying what I'm doing, you know, and, 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 and you know, I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now because, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm talking to somebody who um, is in the same ballpark as me, understands, you know, um, what I'm talking about to some extent or another. Um, and that that's nice because there's a connection and that, that and that that's that's great but i know that you know i know when i'm when i'm when i'm on form i know that um that i sort of i notice now i can notice to enjoy it i can sort of savor it um, knowing full well that it won't last because 
you know, I, I, I'll, you know, I've got I've got a leaking shower upstairs, um, and um, and I've tried, you know, for quite some time to fix that leak in that shower, and you know, <laughs> it, I'm just I, I'll probably call a guy, probably start swearing, okay. you know, in an hour or so's time. Um, and just sort of go, oh, fuck it, I'm getting a plumber out, you know. Um, but th- there'll be those moments where I'm like, oh, God, oh, what you? Um, so it, it goes up and down. It go, it, you know, life is, you know, very frustrating one minute and um, like, going great the next. I I like that. I I'm, yeah. There's. L- so many sort of doctrines of philosophy or whatever talk about the the awareness of how you're feeling and how that's what we would often define ourselves as the emotions as they go up and down but the way we should define who we truly are is the the presence or whatever that is aware of the fluctuating emotions and that's that's really hard though because you know you can get caught up in so I went through a point where I tried to not basically kill off all heightened positive emotions because I knew that it was going to eventually result in then sort of... I, w- I thought if I could uh, limit the highs, I could also elevate the lows. But actually all I found was I was just limiting the highs and the lows were still kind of there. So then I realized, okay, so that's not really worked. So then I, now I'm kind of at the point where, and there's, I don't really know what the answer is and I don't really know what it means, but as literally what you just said, you have to learn to watch the highs and appreciate them, but then understand that, you know, frustrating times will come. And, 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 and I think, and everyone in the world that is human deals with that because that is that is a congenital feature of being human and it's it's a birth is a given so and i'm sure there's some sort of guru or monk or philosopher, philosopher out there who has really really put his nail on the head of how you work with that or maybe they haven't but i think that is kind of the point that that's a higher level of consciousness, as some people would, someone would say. It's not the level, it's, it's higher than the average level of consciousness being at that. Probably not the highest level of consciousness, what if it is consciousness, who knows. But that is a good place to be. Yeah, Maybe. and um, I, think, I, th- I, think, I think also understanding that you'll never work it out. Yeah. You'll never, you'll never work it out. And if you're enjoying the process of working it out, that's good enough. You know, if you, if, if it's, you know, if it serves you to, to try and understand it and to notice more about how you feel, then yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, obviously, obviously you're quite, even if you haven't had difficulties with or significant you're obviously still a very introspective person, which is and a, and, a, and a deep thinker in your in your own way, um, and creative as well. I mean, I, I think I, I have, I, you know, I would I wouldn't say I haven't had difficulties. I definitely have. And, yes, no, of course. I definitely have, but but I I, I don't um I don't think I'm any different mm. to okay. anyone else. And I know I, I know the the extremes. You know, I, I, you know, I don't. A really good friend of mine a couple of years ago threw himself off of a beachy head, um, you know, because it had gone to, he, he, I still don't know. I still don't know how it got to that point. Um, but I know that his world shrank so, so far that he just couldn't see another way out. And I, and I, and that's, that's, who I find incredibly sad, um, yeah. because I know if he'd have just waited and sought help, um, and, and and understood that other people feel 
that way at times, it would have helped. Um, yeah, the, the 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 awful tendency of people that are really struggling to for their brains to tell them to to go into this echo chamber of what they're feeling and just completely get trapped and paralyzed with the way they're thinking is such an awful yeah. sort of yeah. uh the fact that it they those two things come in tangent tandem together is so awful because it's the last thing you'd want the last thing you'd want someone to feel like that is to feel alone uh and it, you know it's it's completely and the opposite is true. If if you want to do great things in life, they say do it with other people, don't you? And and everything's better with other people. So the flip side is, I think the the phrase you use of shrunk is 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 a really really good phrase. Actually, the world shrunk, sh- everything just shrunk around him. And yeah, I mean that's a whole other podcast in itself, really. I mean, um, it, 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 you know, it happened to yeah, you know, it happened to my dad as well. You know, my dad, my I mean, it, not in the same way, but you know, his world shrank. He he. He went from a working life mm. um, where he had lots of people around him, all different ages, um, you know, a real nice mix of people you know, based in London, um, you know, pressurized, you know, a lot, lot, lot of stress. And, um, <clears throat> but then the next minute, you know, his whole world is at the golf club. Yeah, exactly. No, that's where he gets his inf- information from. And, you know, you can see it. You can see it overnight. You know, his world just went yeah. down to this really small world. Um, because, yeah, and it's, it, it, yeah, because I, I wonder if it's because maybe societally or maybe it's inherent, a, a man's worth is hugely predicated on what he can provide and what he can create and as you get maybe as you get older you you see that slowly falling away slowly falling away from you to some degree in the sense of it doesn't actually have to because not really a lot is changing but maybe there's a societal change that you're perceived differently I don't know but maybe there's 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 an element of that that that's why people men become depressed because that's how they perceive it even though that isn't actually the case but unfortunately that's how their brains are telling them or they they think something's going on i'm not sure but yeah and I, and I, and I, and i think that sort of it brings us back to the whole idea of balance is that you know <clears throat> okay we we are you know there's the masculine and the feminine um but just they are not male and female no exactly you know we have we have this you know in this ability to behave in a masculine or feminine way whether we're a, whether we're a male or a female um and you know i think i mean you're a football fan and i you know i'm guessing you played football um mm-hmm. you know as a kid at the very least you know, I played I played football for for a long, long time, and um, yeah, there are some people that play the sport of football who are yeah, you yeah, probably could do with getting in touch with their feminine side. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's again, it's balance. It's just back to this. You know, we, you know. Yeah, we, we we don't have to be, you know, just because we're a man, we don't have to be super masculine. We don't have to be the provider all the time. Exactly, uh, yeah. Completely. Right, final question, um, because we just hit the hour mark. It's called the, the Breaking Point podcast because I'm interested in people's breaking points breaking points now maybe you don't have one to be fair maybe you've got a point that's a breaking point in a good term that would be good i think we've had one of them before can you think of a moment that was really really pivotal and you thought i need either i need to make a change or a eureka moment or this has changed everything in a good way i don't know whatever has come to mind 
if there has been something and if not then that's also absolutely fine i mean there is there are so many i mean there are so so many um, won't walk. so many so many points and um yeah i i think i mean the theme throughout them all has been i've pushed this far enough I can't push it any further. I've gone to the edge. I don't want to go over it. Um, I've tested it to its limits, whether it's a relationship or a business or, um, or you know, one of the, you know, I don't know, you, I manage my son's football team and, you know, you know, yeah, the, you know, some of the parents of the kids are just, a, yeah, just yeah. ludicrous people you know they push you know you get to the point where it's like no right okay now you you've just take you've just you've pushed me too far now the reason your son isn't playing isn't on at the moment is because in our um you know in our in our minds me and the guy who ran the football team he's not as good as the other kids yes yeah. And that's why he's not playing. He will, he will get on because we always put them. We always put them on. We never had a sub. Yeah, ne- did, didn't get didn't get on. But the reason I'm just telling you the truth now. The reason he's not on the field at the moment is because we've got to win this game to win the league, and therefore we're going to play the best players we can. And your son, unfortunately, isn't one of them. Is that okay? It's not okay. Um, um, you know, and and so I think you know, I I, I I'm That's very. <laughs> yeah, he didn't. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. It's just. It, it, I think I, I'm. I'm very. Um, I will take things to the edge. I will take things to the edge. I will push them quite a long way. Um, but yeah. then, and, and and the reason I do that is because I would. I know, I want to know that I've. Maximize. I want. I want to feel as though I've tried as hard as I can to make this yeah. work. Um, um. I don't want to. I don't want to have any regrets. Um. But yeah, I, 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 I and then, then I will, um, I will, I will go the other way. I will go in the other direction. Um, when I've tried as much as I can, as hard as I can, and that you know that that's that's true. In many many spheres you know as i said relationships um business uh which again is all about relationships I and mean, most of it's about relationships if it's not about relationships with somebody else it's about relationship with yourself um you know and, and it's yeah and and I, and I think yeah we haven't touched on it but you know I, well we sort of have but i've got this one day I'll write my book, which is, you know, which will be called Winning is for Losers. And, and, and I, and I think yeah. it, it's, it's just, you know, life, life isn't a competition. It's not a competition. Simon Sinek's got a good little video. If you want to search it out called, um, what's it called? I can't remember what it's called, but it's about finite and infinite games. And, you know, football is a finite game. Um, sport. Is, you know, find that game. As you said, you know the rules. Um, you know, you know, within the confines of something, how to play it. Inside of all of that, it's 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 the unknown, and that's what yeah. makes it so joyous. Um, but life is not one of those finite games. Life is an infinite game, um, and yeah. it, it, you know, business is an infinite game. It's not. It's not something you can. You can't win a business. Um, you, you know, you just do what you can to enjoy play, uh, and that's the way I see life. It's just like do I, I will do what I can to enjoy playing the game of life, um, but breaking points are or turning points is what we refer to them in our podcast as. Um, okay, you know, and and and, and everybody everybody has them. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, you know, and that's 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 the roller coaster. That's when you start coming up again. Um, mm. You know, and and but, but as you sort of alluded to earlier, you do have them at the top as well. Um, 
you know, and, and what the hell is the top anyway? You know, uh, I mean, I, I know somebody who, you know, sold his business for um, 45 million quid and then two, week, two weeks later took his own life. You know, it, or, you know, the winning, the winning and the losing that it's sort of, I think a lot of the time it's what other people see, not what you see. Yeah. The, the, I always th- sort of, sorry, I know we will stop, but just because what you said, that's obviously awful, but I've always had this idea that the the moment you reach the the tallest point of the largest mountain you can con- you can um, conceive of will be the worst day of your life. Um, yeah, because what's left? Exactly. Yeah, what's left? What yeah. What do you yeah. do now? I, I I think I think what what um I, I think what happens is a lot of the time is that we get good at something. Um, and we perform when others look at us and say, oh, you're great at business or you're great at running an agency or you're a great teacher or you're, you know, um, great at football and, you know, whatever it might be. And, and, and because people are telling us we're great, we just carry on doing it and we forget that to sort of stop and go, is this serving me? Maybe I could play another game. Um, yeah. So, you know, it, it, you know, and you, you see it all the time. You know, you, you see people who, who literally climb mountains and they carry on climbing mountains because that, they, they think that that's their thing and people tell them yeah. they're great and they become a little bit famous because they've done this and done that. And they, they don't stop to say, well, maybe I could put all this energy and my abilities to learn and to grow into something else. Yeah, exactly. And it... It also the when you're filled with all the adoration in one aspect of your life, it highlights all the inad- inadequ- inadequacies in the other aspects of your life, and that and that's what can 